Designer Laurie Rodkin has led the kind of life that most of us only dream about. She began her career as a designer of homes for rock stars like Alice Cooper and Rod Stewart. She then became a talent manager and launched the careers of several young unknowns, Brad Pitt, Robert Downey Jr. and Sarah Jessica Parker, to name a few. Now she is known as a designer of jewellery. Her first client was the legendary actress Elizabeth Taylor. Today her famous bondage rings and other unique designs adorn the bodies of Madonna, Steven Tyler, Elton John, Cher and even First Lady Michelle Obama, who wore Laurie Rodkin's designs to the first inauguration. Those pieces now reside in the Smithsonian's permanent collection. I caught up with Laurie on a recent visit to Bangkok. Well, we're here in the penthouse at the Hotel Muse with Laurie Ronkin. And Laurie, welcome to Bangkok. Thank you. You enjoying it? I'm actually loving Bangkok. It's so uh, it, much more exotic than I anticipated. Are you keeping your cool? I don't know about that. I'm really trying. Hard to look cute in the heat. Yeah, it is challenging, actually. It's a, it's a great place, though. I mean, obviously, for, for your industry, there's, it's a very exciting place to be. I mean, what brought you here to Bangkok? Uh, Belinda Carlisle from the band The Go-Go's. And I were having lunch, and she was like, have you ever been to Bangkok? We've just gotten a place here, and you should come. It's a great market for you. And it's one area that I haven't sold my jewelry in, so I thought, you know, why not? I was in Istanbul. It wasn't that far. You've got a good following here in Asia, don't you, in Japan and China already? Yeah, in Japan they treat me like a rock star. Um, there was a rumor going around, if you have me on your cell phone, uh, it's good luck. So people always stop me on the street and make me their screensaver. Oh, that's fantastic. I know, Great. Right? <laughs> Funny. <laughs> And uh, I mean, for the for your audience, I mean, for your market for the jewelry, is it? I mean, is it something that works for wherever you are in the world? It seems to, because I'm sold around the world in random places like Kazakhstan and Azerbaijan and Paris. So, um, I, because the Asian women, everyone likes to accessorize, and I think that people are looking for a new way to wear their diamond jewelry, and I'm an irreverent diamond jeweler. Now, I've had a look at your website. You've had an amazing career three careers really. I mean, can you tell me a little bit about the first one because I believe you were in the designing homes scene. Yeah, I like to refer to my careers as having career ADD. Um, I, uh, they've all been accidental. Um, you know, I fell into, I was dating, uh, I was engaged to a man named Bernie Toppin who's Elton's lyricist. And when we started living together, he only had a bed in his house. So I was like, we need furniture. So he was like, decorate the house and then you know, randomly, uh, his best friends hired me, Rod Stewart, Alice Cooper. So I really kind of had, you know, great fortune in that way. Wow, and you built that into its own career. Yeah, and Amazing. I love uh, collecting art and antiques, so it was a natural, organic career for me. And then from there, you went into becoming a, an agent for a lot of big names that in Hollywood today. So how did you get into that? Um, accidentally. <laughs> was, uh, every, my career is all about a boy, it seems, but. I was dating a Russian ballet dancer who had just defected, so he asked me to manage him. I knew nothing about ballet, but I knew everyone in Hollywood from you know, being in that mix music-wise. And so we put a ballet tour together for him. His name was Alexander Grudinov. He danced with the Bolshoi and uh, Baryshnikov. And then I put him in Die Hard and Witness and became a manager. Wow. It, it sounds like y your own life actually is a Hollywood script. Does well, it feel like that? A little bit. I mean, I keep thinking, how did I get where I am mm -hmm. or into these random situations? Um, someone said, listen, I have this really cute, struggling actor. Could you meet with him? His name was Brad Pitt. And then Robert Downey Jr. and Sarah Jessica Parker. And people kept sending me talent to represent. So I launched all of these people. And, you know, we were being paid to play. It was in a, quite an amazing time in the 80s that way. Really, really amazing time. <clears throat> now, your jewelry is your third career. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, when Robert Downey Jr. was misbehaving creatively, um, this is what I did to stay sane uh, and keep myself awake at night because I would uh, rescue Robert from where he was being creative and um, for a better euphemism uh, and drive him to the set and someone saw a ring I designed um, and hired me to make jewelry for Elizabeth Taylor. Wow, that, that must have been incredible. She, she was a real icon, wasn't she? And, and an amazing girl. She would call me up and be like, honey, it's Elizabeth. I know it's only 8 a.m., and I'm in my pajamas, but I want to come over and shop. 
So let's do blues today. And she was such a cute, enthusiastic, girly woman. That what an amazing way to start my career. Oh, incredible way. And your jewelry is so unique too. Obviously famous for your bondage rings and so on, but then it's being worn by so many different people from Madonna to Michelle Obama. I mean, obviously it's appealing to a lot of different tastes across the board. I mean, is that what you set out to achieve? I was designing jewelry really for myself. And so I was really surprised when it became such a, you know, when I started making jewelry, there was no creative jewelry on the market. It was serious jewelry. And I think that it speaks to people in a different way. It lets them express themselves. I think it was Chanel that said, how we adorn ourselves is how we reflect our soul. And it really sets us apart from everyone else in a black dress. We can all have black pants and a black dress, but the things you layer on top of it are, are your signature and imprint. Is there any particular way you would define your jewelry, your look, the style? I mean, is it is it definable? Oh, uh, God, you know, it's kind of had a few adjectives, but modern meets medieval, fashion mm. forward, mm. with no rules. I like that, no rules. It's always the best. Just have fun, yeah? yeah. That's, and if you're designing for yourself and other people like it, then that's a bonus. For me, yes, for sure. I mean, for, for you, what's next? Are there any other career moves? Oh, God, you know, someone said to me, what's your five-year plan? And I was, I don't really have a five-minute plan. It's wherever the day takes me. Um, I'm expanding into houseware and home um, design. I have fragrance and eyewear. Um, and I'll end up producing a movie someday and writing a book. Well, so these things that are all sort of ticking around in your head that you just want to do for yourself, yeah? yeah? The book is, keeps coming up because I've had so many extraordinary experiences in three careers that I would love to encourage young talent to go for it. I mean, a lot of people say that you've got to focus so much on one career and you've, you've got to put all your attention towards it. You're the opposite example of you can actually do anything if you put your mind to it and you're passionate. I believe anyone can do anything. Just say yes. You can always say no later and there is no failure. I just wrote an article for someone about self-rule. And I said, you know, that it doesn't matter because every step you take is a step towards something else. You know, the worst thing that happens is one thing you tried wasn't it. Mm -hmm. There's the next thing. So I, th I would love people just to have no fear. Is this the favorite time of your life that you're at now or have they all been sort of favorites? You know, I would say that in the moment they were all favorites, but this has really been an extraordinary journey for me because I've gotten to meet, you know, I make joy for heads of countries and I have no idea how, but I've made joy for the royal family in, you know, Qatar. I've made joy for the president of Kazakhstan and Azerbaijan, and I'm in the White House. I'm in the Smithsonian for Mrs. Obama. I mean, I'm not sure how all this happened, but... It's fantastic. And then the average lady in a, in a I guess, from an average part of the world is wearing your jewelry too, and yeah. they all love it from, from here to there. That's great if you can cross all those boundaries. You know, I'm just a girl in the end, you know, so I'm, the, I'm them. And we all love bling. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> now, one other thing I do have to ask you, um, Philip B, obviously you've been uh, swanning around Bangkok with Bryant from Philip B. <laughs> My favorite shampoo. My favorite too. So, I mean, t tell me about you, you love it. What do you use in particular? Well, I love the amber perfume and the patchouli, the oud. And he um, gave me the peppermint uh, shampoo the other day, which was amazing on my scalp. And my hair, I mean, this, feels, this feels like a commercial, um, but it's not. It's, my hair has never felt this silky, and I'm obsessed. I mean, you've got long hair, you've got great hair too, and in this sort of climate, you've got to take care of it. So I know what it's like when you're on the road all I, the time. I have very curly hair, so the fact that it's still staying straight is I want to marry Philip B. <laughs> I want to marry Philip B. I'll <laughs> oh, have to fight over him. <laughs> so great. So what are you going to take away from you um, from Bangkok from this experience? Uh, you know, I've been to some beautiful mm -hmm. temples and I've met some amazing people here. I've been having a lot of fun. So, you know, every time I'm in a new culture and I see different architecture, it's reflected in my designs. You know, it's, it, it stays in my brain. So that. So we can look forward to see something that's got a little bit of a Thai flavor maybe in the future. Great. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Laurie. Thank you so much.